Hey guys, this is John, and I'm playing Rajupi in the 15-minute pool in ICC. This is a opponent I've played before, and I was black in the previous game, so I opened with white, uh, opened with D4 as white in this one. So last game that we played against this opponent, they got into some pretty serious time pressure, and it was a struggle for them uh, to keep up on the clock towards the end. So I want to adopt a line that gives me the best chance of doing something similar. So I could play Samish, f3, or I could play knight f3 and go to the classical, as I've no been known to do. I think I will play the Samish, because um, within the classical, I haven't been playing a lot of the classical main lines recently, and I feel like the Samish gives me the best chance for a complicated fight out of all the lines in my current repertoire. And that's what I want. I don't want to simplify the position against him too quickly. This is a player who's shown that he's going to sit there and think. Okay, e5. <laughs> After having just said that I don't want to simplify, against this particular move, it is correct to take and then trade queens. So I will do that. I've had a couple OTB games in this line, and here you go, knight d5. It's hard for black to equalize in this variation because now I'm attacking c7. Uh, the point is, after they take on d5, I take with my c pawn. I'll just pre-move that one. And they play c6, attempting to undermine the d5 pawn. You have knight to c3. And that is one reason I like knight g2 on move 6 instead of bishop e3, which is the more common Samish move. It's because you have this knight c3 option in this line. So e5, I think, is a little bit dubious against this line, whereas against the Samish, it's like perfectly playable. So... Let's see how Rajupi handles it. Um, very rarely does anyone play anything other than c6 here. So yeah, now I get to do this. And if he takes, I get to install my knight on d5. It's a nice position. So he is letting me do this. Now knight c7 is a threat. If knight c6, bishop g5 is the move. And then I'm going to have to remember some theory. So bishop g5. I think he's supposed to play rook to d6 here. And if I recall my analysis correctly, I'm supposed to play rook to c1 at that point. Rook to c1. Not rook to d1, which you would think would be the better move. Because rook d1 would threaten uh, like knight e7 check, trying to win the rook on d6, but I believe it's rook to c1. I'm just trying to recall the specific reason for that. Rook c1, bishop e6. I can play knight c7 if I want. I can also play bishop c4. Okay, let's do it. Again, we're going to try to keep the pressure on them. I mean, you can't really stop bishop e6 anyways. But uh, we will have resources when they play that move. It would be a choice between bishop c4 or maybe knight c7 right away. And then after the rook moves, take on e6. Okay, he plays it. So if knight c7, let's say rook c8, that's probably the most likely move. Knight takes e6. Um, pawn takes e6. Their structure is messed up, but they have this nice d4 square to work with. Knight c7, rook c8. Knight takes e6, f takes e6. I can play bishop c4. They can't play knight d4 yet because of uh, bishop takes e6. That's, that's a nice idea. I can also maybe play b4 there. Hmm, that would be audacious. Hmm. I mean, bishop c4 seems like a decent move too, but I'm just not seeing the follow-up for me after that. Especially if bishop c4, knight a5, attacking the bishop.
Whereas this knight c7 move, it's a bit more forcing, and I think I can kind of visualize the position that I'm going to get a little bit better. Like knight c7, rook c8, knight takes e6, f takes e6. The b4 sure is tempting there, but I'm not sure it's correct. No, I'd probably play bishop c4 instead. I like bishop c4. And then maybe go like king f2 after that, bring my other rook over. He, he's eventually going to play knight c4, or knight to d4, rather. It's almost a matter of time. Tough call. Okay, let's do this one. We're going with knight c7. After rook c8, it'd be nice if knight b5 was anything, but I think they can just play rook d7. Knight takes a7 doesn't work. Knight takes a7 and they protect their rook. Moreover, the light square bishop would be protecting the rook in a lot of cases too. So rook c8, knight takes e6, f takes e6. I wonder if it makes sense to even consider like g3, bishop h3. Probably not though. Probably bishop c4 as planned originally. I keep looking at that b4 move though. I mean, it is nice that our bishop on g5 is helping to protect the rook on c1. I mean, where else is he going to put the rook other than c8? Like, b8 makes no sense. d8 he can't play because the bishop takes d8. It's kind of c8 or bust. Yeah, now let's take. There's nothing to be gained by any other move. Oh, he takes with the rook. I was really thinking he was going to take with the pawn. Because now I get to go bishop c4 with tempo, and maybe I can establish my bishop on d5. Okay, well, that's interesting. Well, yeah, this, this move is too obvious not to play. Plays the rook back. Ah, okay. So that way he... Hmm. Yeah, now he can move this knight and maybe jump into d4. I could play bishop b5 if I want to stop him from doing that. And try to mess up his structure a bit. Bishop b5. Yeah, and then if his knight moves, I can just take the rook, because again, our bishop is protecting um, the rook on c1. Maybe I'll try that. I don't think there's any risk to playing this move. So I'm going to give it a shot and see what he does against it. I think he'll play rook right back to e6. He does. But maybe now king f2? He's pinned. King f2, a6, bishop c4. Yeah, let's do that. King e2, he would have knight d4, so probably better to step to this square. I'm trying to keep a little bit of pressure with our bishops. He's playing a lot faster this game than last time. I think he might remember what happened last time. <laughs> so he's maybe thinking he doesn't want to end up in time pressure as before. All right, so if we just trade everything, that's probably really close to equal. So bishop c4 seems like the most consistent move to try to keep an advantage. So let's do that. And then I'm thinking I'll probably put the bishop on d5. Uh, the only issue is, like, if bishop d5 right away, knight b4 could be a problem. Hmm. Bishop d5, knight b4. And if I take on b7, he has knight d3 check is the thing.
Better play a3 just to be safe. Yeah, cover the b4 square. Would have been nice to avoid playing that move, but I think it's okay. The thing is, his knight is going to look nice on d4, but it doesn't have a whole lot to attack. And if push comes to shove, I could always play bishop e3 and then take on d4. So on the whole, I'm not like incredibly worried about that move. The thing he'd really love to do is trade dark square bishops. If he can do that, he ensures like the safety of the knight on d4 indefinitely. It would be like a perma outpost. Next move, I'm going to play bishop d5 if I can. Still doing okay time-wise. I mean, we're on move 21 and I have 9 minutes. He has 10 and a half. And I think I'm probably going to gain some time back because he can't just make easy moves for the rest of the game. I'm going to be pressing him. The only trouble in positions like this, um, kind of symmetrical positions, bishop and knight versus two bishops, you know, if he ever needs to, like a good bailout strategy is to try to give back a pawn in order to escape to an opposite color bishop position. So I want to be vigilant about those opportunities and ideally take them away if possible. Puts the knight into d4. Yep, so bishop d5. Let's do it. Hitting the pawn. If b5, maybe bishop b7, and I can take over the file. And I'm hitting the a6 pawn. Yeah, I feel like I can cause him small problems now. I still might play bishop b7. Hmm. Bishop b7. Rook b8. Can I take that? Or is b5 going to be like trapping my bishop, basically? Hmm. Could be risky to take. Okay, once again, I'm going to do this strategy where if he actually does play rook b8, I'm going to decide at that point what to do. I think it's all right to do this. So rook b8, bishop d5, because I'll be threatening rook c7, I think like he doesn't have anything better but just to go back with this rook to the c8 square. But I want to see like if he actually does play rook b8 and if he's like, if he's calculated whether he can give me this pawn or not. So I'm trying to gain some time. Okay, I actually got him to take. That's good, seems to me. Now I own the C file. My bishops are undefended, so I gotta like watch out for that. I mean, just looking for forks and stuff he could potentially do. He can't fork my bishops, but he could like attack one of the bishops at an inconvenient, inconvenient time. I'm hitting this pawn. Now I'm actually liable to take this pawn if allowed, because you know I always have like rook C8 or something if necessary to get my bishop free. Assuming he plays like bishop takes a6, b5, tries to shut it down. Mm, this could be dangerous. I'm not sure he should have played that last move. I think rook takes c1 could be a big mistake. He'll probably play a5. And then I'm thinking bishop d5 because I can't play rook c7 due to knight e6. Forking the rook and also the bishop. But if I could quickly play bishop d5 and rook c7, I could have him totally under my thumb pretty soon. I mean, what can he play other than a5? It seems like everything else practically is losing a pawn. Maybe knight b3, rook c7, knight c5, but then bishop d5, pressure here. It's too unstable for him. So now, yeah, a5, bishop d5. He might want to throw an h6 somewhere. Let's say he plays it then. Bishop back to e3. 
rook e7, guarding the seventh rank. Let's say I give a check on c8. King escapes. And I can play like rook over here, attack the pawn. Got to move this guy. So let's do that. See, I think h6 is probably what he should do. Ah, you know what? I can play actually rook c7 right away if I want upon h6. Idea being h takes g5, bishop takes f7, check, king f8, bishop takes e8. And the point is, like, he can't play king takes e8 because I go take his bishop on g7. That would be undefended. However, so if h6, rook c7, maybe he can play knight e6. Not too certain about that move. Because that forks the rook and the bishop. So let's say bishop takes e6, rook takes e6. But then I can play maybe bishop here, and, and it's possible I could go after that b6 pawn. That pawn could be tough for him to defend. I like that because it's more dynamic than just retreating the bishop right away. So if like h6, bishop e3, it makes it a little easier for him to defend after bishop, uh, rook to e7. So maybe I wouldn't mind trading my light square bishop for his knight if it meant that in the end game that comes up that is simplified, I can attack that b6 pawn. So once again, that line is um, h6, rook c7. And I think I've shown that h takes g5, bishop takes f7 is going to win me material. Pretty sure I calculated that right. So um, instead of that knight e6, bishop takes e6. Let's assume rook takes e6. And then just bishop back to e3. Idea of like rook b7 hitting this pawn. Maybe I want to throw in rook c8 check first. Just to like force his king to h7 and also stop bishop f8. So that line from the beginning would be um, h6, rook c7, knight e6. Bishop takes e6, rook takes e6, rook c8, check. If bishop f8, then I have bishop takes h6. So after rook c8, check, king h7, um, then I can drop my bishop back. And it's harder for his bishop to get involved. That's kind of what I'm thinking. Okay, so let's do this. I think I've got this calculated correctly. Is knight b5 anything to worry about? Knight b5, rook d7. No, that's, that's fine. Okay. One other line I looked at, um, just in regards to h takes g5, is h takes g5, bishop takes f7, king f8, bishop takes e8, knight e6. But there I have rook c8, guarding the bishop. So I'm pretty sure he's going to play knight e6 now. I don't see anything else that is good. I mean, if rook, rook f8 is so horribly passive for one thing, but it's also probably just bad because of bishop e7. So after knight e6, bishop takes, rook takes, do I throw in that check or not? That's a big question. I mean, at first I was thinking I want to. But now I'm not so sure. This is kind of nice attacking f7, too. So I'd like to be able to make that decision before he makes his next move. So knight e6, bishop takes, rook takes. Um, if just bishop e3 directly, bishop f8 was the move I was concerned about. But you know what? I can always play rook c8 then. So what's the big deal? OK, take. There's even like bishop d8, but that allows rook d6. I shouldn't do that. Bishop e7, mm, no, e3 is the proper square. I'm going to refrain from throwing that move in. Yeah, I'm just going to bring this back. Because I think on bishop f8, like I can always play rook c8, and then there's the threat of bishop takes h6. I'm deriving some benefit from that. Yeah, like now I can do this if I want. Wins a pawn.
Or do I try to play king e2 and like milk my advantage? Hmm. Because maybe my king can just like stroll in. It's not out of the question. Let's just do this just to be, just to see what he's up to. My, my fear is that after king g7 take, I can't win that resulting rook end game. That's the thing. I mean, I'd like to think I can, but <laughs> it is just like reducing to a four versus three, and his pawns will be easier to protect because there's no bishop on the board attacking it. Yeah, he's going to make me that offer, whether to do that or not. I think I should just play king e2. I'm going to play king e2. I think this is honestly an easier way of playing. Like, bishop takes h6 simplifies the position. I want to cover the second rank a little bit better, so that, like, later on, rook d6 or rook c6, in the event that I do go down that bishop takes h6 and rook takes f8 line, I just want to make sure he can't get, like, easily into c2 or something and start getting all this counterplay. I mean, he can't play bishop c5. I mean, bishop d6 is bad. Bishop e7, I guess he's trying. And I think I can just kind of walk up here. Let's see, he wants to play b5. Maybe I should fix this weakness. a4. Let's do that. Is b4 a good square for him? Because if king d3, b5, his pawns could be kind of annoying. Okay, let's do that. Ah, is he going to go bishop g5? I didn't see that. That's the point of bishop e7. Mm, that was kind of dumb of me. <laughs> I see a backup plan, though. So if rook d6, I can just play bishop e1. And we're going to try to put the bishop on c3 now. New plan. I mean, the clock is really playing... Okay, that's just the drop of a bishop. But the clock was really playing into my uh, my play here. Yeah, kind of an unfortunate way to end it, but... <laughs> he said, well played. Just say thanks for the game. Okay, let's go back to the beginning and take a look. So, as I said in this same-ish with uh, knight g2, compared to the more popular move, bishop e3, one of the advantages is that e5 is... Uh, I think leading to this endgame, which in my opinion is is pretty nice for white. I wouldn't mind like going into this endgame regularly. So knight c3. And I think he played it pretty well. Like this is one of the best lines. He he figured it out fast too. Unless maybe he's played it before, I don't know. But um we hit the rook and now he plays rook d6. This is the first major decision. I couldn't quite remember what to do. Yeah, rook c1 is the engine move. And that's what I remembered from my analysis, but We'll see after bishop e6. Because like I said, it seems more natural to play rook d1 because you threaten that. But he's going to plug the uh, d file with knight d4. So you actually want the rook on the c file since the d file is likely to become clogged. So rook c1, he played bishop e6. Okay, engine approves of knight c7. And we grab the bishop pair. Yeah, for some reason, I just really thought he would take with the pawn. The computer also thinks that's the better move. It looks weird, but... I don't know, like these pawns control a lot of space in the center. Also, it, it stops me from like putting my bishop on d5, which could be a big help. So maybe rook takes e6 is like not as good. Now bishop c4, he played rook back. I went bishop b5. This was mainly just to see like if he would repeat the position or not. Bishop d5 is better, huh? Knight b4, I wasn't sure about this. King e2, so I can let him take on d5 according to the computer. And maybe my d-pawn is dangerous. That's not a line I thought about too closely. So bishop b5, he went rook e6, and now I played king f2. And yeah, it's it's irritating for him that he has to spend so long like just trying to get out of this c-file pin. He's had to spend multiple tempos now kind of um, extricating himself from this situation. He played a6, I went bishop c4, rook back. I played a3. The computer liked that move. It was saying a3 was good. Because if I go here right away, I think knight b4. And I didn't like the fact that d3 was a forking option for him. So a momentary reprieve from our play with a3 just to control that key b4 square. 
plays knight d4, bishop d5, b6. Hmm. Computer says bishop f8. Yeah, because I'm not really threatening this move. If this is played, then he gets rook b8 in, and he's going to win my b2 pawn if I move my bishop. I don't know about that line. I mean, Check. computer's saying that this is possible. White only has a small advantage. I mean, I guess he can always pick off this pawn if he wants to, but I wouldn't have gone for this. No way. And note, I can't play rook c7 here to maintain my bishop, because again, this 96 move hurts. So... Yeah, probably right around here is where he might have had a chance to um, try to get the bishop in the game, like bishop f8. I think that's a good plan, and put the bishop on d6. And it requires like some uh, tactical orchestrating to make sure he doesn't like lose, but that might be the move. b6, I played bishop b7. Yeah, and here he took on c1 pretty quick, but I thought rook b8 was better. I mean, isn't, isn't this a problem for me? If I take that pawn, bishop e3. Uh, okay, so I guess if, if here there's always bishop to c8 to escape. It just seemed like this bishop could be uh, a liability trying to get out. I guess rook e6, there's also bishop c8. Hmm, so maybe I can grab that a6 pawn. Surprising, due to this bishop e3 move. What's the point of bishop e3? I guess it's not even due to bishop e3, it's just because I have c8 available to get out on. Hmm. Well, yeah. Well, it's possible that b6 is just a big mistake. It seems to be that way. He should just leave the pawn there. Because after here, now I, I felt I was in pretty firm control. I've got the file, I've got the bishops. This bishop's coming to d5. His pawns have been compromised. So rook c7 is the threat. Computer likes bishop f8. Again, this bishop move. This is key in a lot of um, exchange variations of the king's Indian. It's because like this pawn on e5 is never going to be able to move. So his bishop has nothing to do there on the, the a1, h8 diagonal, so he should try to reroute it. Looks like I have some advantage even in this case. But h6, I went here. Knight e6, take, take. And here I was debating between bishop e3 and rook c8 check. Check. Rook c8 check has the advantage that uh, it stops bishop f8 because he just loses after this with the pin. But um, I wasn't sure. Like I thought here he'd play maybe bishop f6. I guess I do have this move though, don't I? Maybe I should have played that rook c8 move. Yeah, yeah. I think given what happened, that was probably the better option. Because I went bishop e3, he played bishop f8. Rook here and here. Yeah, and the computer's yelling at me, Check. telling me to do this. But I really thought this endgame like, might be tough to, to win. Okay, so he's got to defend f7, so let's say king g7. And like no matter where I put the rook, here or here, he's going to put his rook, like let's say rook c8, he's going to put his rook on the d-file, right? And then let's say I go to e2 to cover these infiltration squares. I'm up a pawn, but the play has been simplified. And I'm a long ways from being able to use my 4 versus 3 advantage. So even though the computer says, like, plus 2, I don't think this would be an easy position to win, necessarily. Unless I have a plan of going, like, I don't know, like, b4, take, take, b5, and then rook c6. But I have a feeling my pawn, like, as soon as b4 is played and then the capture, he has rook d4 and going after it. It's not going to be simple. Maybe I could preface it with, I don't know, like, rook b8 or something, but... Rook d6 is a, it's a good square for his rook because he stops my king from coming over to the queen side too. And I felt like given the time, I want to keep it more complicated. And I felt like my position was good enough that I didn't have to cash in the pawn advantage. I'd love to win the b6 pawn rather than the h6 pawn. So you went here. This is a good plan. I didn't connect it to bishop g5. So I played a4 trying to fix that b pawn to its location. Yeah, and then he did this. Fortunately, I can play bishop f2. Again, I'm trying to stay out of a, a pure rook end game. My plan was just to come here and kind of regroup. It'd be a lot harder now, though. Um, he's going to have some awkward times defending this pawn, though, because f6 is pretty ugly. It like, weakens his 7th rank and actually just gets his bishop trapped, too, after h4 here and this. So he might have some, some difficulties coping with this. Like, if I could entice the rook back to e6, 
then the D file is clear. My king can start like walking up, and maybe I stand a good chance of winning this pawn in the end, or maybe even come to D5. So unfortunate for him that he blundered with bishop c1, but uh, yeah, I think I was in good shape to try to convert this. Um, but that said, black's position is not lost by any means here. It's just it would be really tough for him to defend given the time and white's advantage. So my advice to players uh, playing black is avoid this line. If your opponent plays knight ge2 on move six, don't play e5. e5 is acceptable against bishop e3. Against here, against knight ge2, I think you're asking for a slightly worse end game. So c5 or knight c6 or even pawn c6 are all better moves. All right, hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll be back tomorrow with another standard video. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.